All right, what's going on everyone out there on YouTube, NES Ruler, and welcome to a brand new review, and this time around we'll be checking out a film that was sent to me review by Cauldron Films, and you can pick this up right now on Blu-ray. It is a film from 2015 that is just getting a worldwide Blu-ray release right now, courtesy of Cauldron Films. You can pick this up at all your favorite online retailers. It is a film called Lisa the Fox Fairy. So this movie is Hungarian. I haven't seen too many Hungarian films before. It's one country that, um, surprisingly, I haven't seen too many films from. So it's always cool when you start to um, watch films from countries that you're not so familiar with. Because, you know, I watch films from all over the world. I have pretty much my whole life. So to see films from a place that I'm not that uh, knowledgeable of, it's quite interesting. So Lisa the Fox Fairy, like I said, this came out in 2015. Played the U.S. Um, film festival circuit, but never had a release until now. This movie is so quirky and weird. If you're a fan of, like, Wes Anderson, you're going to love this movie. You can totally tell it's a total love letter to Mr. Wes Anderson and his cinematic style. You know, his mise-en-scene of really colorful settings, really quirky characters, really quirky dialogue, really quirky narrative. Just everything that you come to love from a Wes Anderson movie, this film is thrown in there with pieced together with a film like A Meal, which is a, a fantastic film as well. So it definitely has really great influences. But like I said, Wes Anderson is definitely the biggest influence in this movie. So basically, we follow Lisa. Lisa is a nurse, and she is taking care of this woman in this apartment. And this apartment is haunted by this Japanese pop star. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Lisa's the only one that could see him. No one else could see him. But he appears throughout the film in his apartment. He sings the same song, the same popular Japanese song. But there's something going on. Because Lisa's obviously a very lonely person. This woman that she's caring for dies. And she leaves this house, this flat, to Lisa. So Lisa's now very lonely. She doesn't have any companions or anything like that. So she starts to bring men over to the house. Or she tries to find love. And this ghost of this Japanese pop star starts to get a little bit jealous because he is obviously somehow in love with Lisa as well. So every man that comes anywhere near Lisa, this guy, this spirit, ultimately causes an accident that kills them. And as the film goes on, you could probably get what this Japanese singer is and who his role is in the universe. But, you know, he, he does not let Lisa get close to any man and the way that some of these guys die is just absolutely hilarious and you feel bad for Lisa because you could tell that all she wants is to find somebody that loves her and you know she's just so desperate that she's willing to have any sort of um contact with anybody it doesn't matter who no matter how weird they are you know she's a very loving person you could tell but it's unfortunate because every time that she tries to get close to somebody they die in a horrible accident. And the police start to blame Lisa for all these murders. And she has no real explanation or alibi to um, say that she had nothing to do with all these men ultimately meeting their demise. So one day, one of the police detectives moves in to this apartment and becomes her roommate. And the main love interest starts to build there as the film goes on. And... This police detective, he's a klutz, and this Japanese ghost, pop star ghost, tries to knock him off in any way possible, but he just does not die, and um, the love interest carries on from there. So it's a basically a love film with some really quirky characters, some quirky settings, some quirky dialogues. I mean, this is one of the weirdest films I've seen in a long while. I'm a big fan of Wes Anderson. So um, I, I knew I was probably going to dig this. Um, it's unfortunate many people probably haven't seen this until this release. Like I said, it came out, played in the U.S. film circuit, and that was it for, what, seven years. And now seven years later, it's finally coming out, FIA Cauldron Films, and um, just a really interesting film. Uh, it's not my favorite film by any sense. I feel like it has some issues, and I feel like the narrative kind of drags on, because it's the same thing over and over. Lisa tries to get close to somebody, they die, blah, blah, blah. So it gets kind of uh, generic by the time that the film closes, but it ultimately meets a 
conclusion that is uh, acceptable. You know, I feel like the ending of the film meets its um, meets an acceptable conclusion, if you want to say. So, it's it it's definitely one I would recommend if you like really quirky movies, really weird movies with um, and things like that. So, Lisa and the Fox Fairy. Not Lisa and the Fox Fairy. Lisa the Fox Fairy um, gets my recommendation. I, I, I recommend you guys check it out. It's very, very weird. So this release, um, not that many special features. You got just a behind the scenes, some storyboards where we got the uh, filmmakers talking about the scenes in its storyboard um, form. Um, music video, music plays a huge role in this part, obviously, because it's Japanese pop singers trying to murder all these guys that Lisa falls in love with. So... Uh, music plays a huge part in this. And then we got some, um, uh, like a little short feature out about Fox Fairy. Fox Fairies play a sort of an important part in this film. It kind of is hard to talk about without spoilers, so there's a little bit of a feature out on there. And then there's a, um, like an audio essay, which uh, this person, Kat Ellinger, goes through the film and talks about what she thinks some of the themes are and, and some of the motifs and things like that. It's quite interesting. So... You got some more features on here, the package, just your basic reversible cover artwork and your black disc that you usually get from Cauldron Films. But this is really a quirky one. I hope that uh, Cauldron starts releasing some more of these weird, obscure, newer films that never have gotten a release before until now because I really think that if they keep releasing movies like this, I'm going to be keep excited to watch them. So. That is my review of Lisa the Fox Fairy. If you guys like this review, please give it a thumbs up. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash NESRuler22. Hope everybody is doing well, and I shall see you guys later. See you.